This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss long documents. If you'd like to follow along, go into the file menu to open. And in the sample files folder, scroll down to 1005, Tables of Contents, the next chapter, and just click Open. A table of contents can be created for books, but also magazines, brochures, catalogs, manuals, and more. And setting up a table of contents manually can be quite time consuming with a lot of room for error. In InDesign, you can actually create a table of contents automatically. To do so, everything starts with your paragraph styles. We're going to use the existing styles in this file to set up our table of contents. To get started, go under the Layout menu to Table of Contents, and it's going to open the Table of Contents window. I have some pre-existing styles added here. I'm just going to hit Remove so we can start fresh. The first thing you have to do is to figure out what styles you want to be included in the table of contents. Like for instance, maybe I want every headline, all of my chapters in my particular document, I want that text included in the table of contents. So I'm going to press Add, and InDesign will look for all of the paragraphs that have that style applied. And then it's going to get all the information, the text, as well as the page number that the text is on, and enter it into the table of contents. By default, it's going to use the same style as chapters. I want to use a different style. I have a style set up for the table of contents itself. So I'm going to click down on Entry Style and choose Contents Chapters. I like to name my contents styles in a way that I know how they are supposed to match up with the included paragraph styles. So I usually will call it contents and then the name of the style that I'm matching to. So in this way, I know I'm not going to make mistakes. I'm going to add another style to be included. So there will be a second level to this table of contents. I'm going to click on subhead 14 on auto and hit add. And you can see it's slightly indented because it is a level 2 part of the table of contents. And now I have to do the same thing that I did for chapter. It's going to look for all paragraphs that have subhead applied and it's going to bring all that information into the table of contents and format it using the entry style with all the page numbers. So instead of same style, I'm going to choose contents subs. In a previous lesson quite a while ago when we were talking about styles, I had mentioned that when you're setting up a style, you always have to make sure to check that little checkbox in the style window that says apply style to selected. If you forget to do that and you create your table of contents, it's possible that some of the entries, the first entry, may not be there. So you have to be sure to check apply style to selection. That's just one of the reasons that you need to check that particular choice in setting up your styles. Let's go through the rest of the window. If the more options are not showing like they are in mine, make sure to hit the more options button. And you can see it gives you a lot more choices or else you would just be using the defaults. I want a page number after every entry. I could also change it to before entry or not have a page number at all. It would just be a listing of the various sections. Between the entry and the number, it's going to put a tab character by default. I could choose any of the choices 
that are available from the pop-up, like for instance, an M dash, or a certain kind of a space, like a flush space. And for each one of these, the page number, I can apply a style, a character style. I've actually already done that in the paragraph style itself, so I don't have to do it here. The same thing with all of the information between the entry and the number. I can apply a style there as well. I could choose sort entries in alphabetical order. This would make the table of contents similar to a very simple index because it will be alphabetical instead of in the order that it occurs in the document. Then there's a bunch of options. Create PDF bookmarks. What this would do is if I were to export this as an Acrobat, the entire table of contents would be interactive. I could click on any particular listing and it would take the reader right to that particular page. Replace existing table of contents. So if I had a table of contents in here and I updated my document in some way, it would replace the table of contents. Include book documents. Well, this isn't a book, so it is grayed out, but if it was a book, I could actually include all of my book documents. I could run in my entries so they're not like separate listings. I could also include text on hidden layers if I needed to. And if I had numbered paragraphs, I could exclude the numbers, include the numbers only, or include the full paragraph. And after going through this dialog, if you plan on using the same kind of table of contents again, you can actually save it as a style. And it would be available in the TOC style pop-up, so you wouldn't have to set this up again. I'm just going to click OK. And you can see it already has the text for my table of contents loaded into a brush. All I need to do now is find the frame that I want to use for the table of contents. So I'm just going to scroll up to find that frame. And when I click in the frame, it's going to generate my table of contents using all of the settings that I just set up in the dialog window. In the next lesson, we're going to be discussing indexes.